I want to bring up a personal practice as a suggestion for you. I started as a tech long ago when we read hex codes off computers and then looked them up in 24-inch manuals. We were encouraged to build our own personal manuals of error logs. I still keep this practice, though a bit more advanced than writing out longhand. Nowadays, I take a screen snapshot of the error message and then I keep them in a tool called Omni Outliner. I capture the error and then write down the resolution. Every now and then I'll run into the same error and then be able to quickly find the resolution. On some occasions, I will scan through and get a feel of progress of errors in the application. For example, there are a number of errors I used to run into a Hadoop I no longer see. This is an indication of improvement in the software. Let us take a spin through some of the errors I have encountered with Hadoop, and I will offer some of my comments. First, permission not set correctly. The error message was var log hadoop dash yarn yarn dot log permission denied. Our diagnosis was that this was a directory permission not set correctly, most likely that the hadoop dash yarn log was still owned by root. And indeed, the resolution turned out to be the case. A simple command of sudo chone changed it to yarn quote hadoop and everything worked. Another example of a configuration error was an environmental variable that was not set correctly. The error message was cannot create a directory called user lib hadoop logs, permission denied. Well, we recognized immediately that this was a diagnosis where the environmental variable had not been set correctly. The resolution was simply to go into our hadoop envsh and set it to the proper directory of var log hadoop hdfs. Now, here's a common example of a more generic error. Container fails to launch. The infamous exit code 1. The container failed to launch, and you got an exception from container launch. In this particular case, the application master was not communicating with the scheduling tool in the resource manager. This could be caused by simple communication problems on the network, or a lack of SSH, or potentially an error in the yarn site XML file. Our resolution was indeed to start by checking the SSH connection between the two hosts, and what we did find was that it was a yarn site XML where we had misconfigured the host port address. Unable to create new native thread. Now this is a system type error that was thrown off by Java. We got an out of memory, unable to create new native thread at java.long thread start. Our diagnosis came right off the internet, frankly, and that was that the NPROC was too low. The default is only 4200, and that's what we had left it set. As our cluster had scaled and become even more active and incredibly more busy, we found that we could just simply go into etc systemlimits.conf and make these two adjustments. We set HDFS soft hard limits for NPROC to 50,000, and then also for MapRed soft hard NPROC to 50,000. This resolved our error. Another system problem, too many open files. We got an error message that simply said, too many open files. Well, we immediately knew what this problem was. The diagnosis was, we were hitting the open file handler limits on our user account. The default is set to only 1024, and we know that Hadoop opens up lots and lots of files. Again, we went back to etsystemlimits.conf, and we made some changes. In this case, HDFS dash no files, and we set it to some number that we pulled off the internet. We did test and validate this, and we got this actually from Hortonworks or Cloudera. Too many fetch failures. We had an error message that said too many fetch failures for output of task. This was a difficult one to troubleshoot. We spent a lot of time looking through the logs to find alternative error messages. Eventually, we determined that there was not enough HTTP threads on the mapper side of the application. We actually got this from the application developer. Our resolution was simply to go back to our MapReduce ENV file and make some configuration change settings. These were the settings that we set, mapreduce.slowstart.completed.maps, and we set it to 80%. We also set mapreduce.http.threads, and we set that to 80. Incompatible cluster ID. Now, my personal hope is that you never run into this error, because this can be an ugly problem. 
you'll get an error message that says incompatible cluster ID in disk 1 DFS DN. The diagnosis is that you are out of sync on your cluster IDs between the name node and the data node. It can be caused by kind of improper cluster startup. Here's your problem. Your first step is you will attempt to do shutdown and restarts, hoping that it clears itself, or that you at least get the name node to come up in safe mode. However, if you cannot get the system to come back up, you're going to be faced with a very hard decision of removing all the information and all the data files that are on your data nodes and then reformatting the cluster. Again, you have my hope that you never run into this particular problem. Let me emphasize a couple of points about problem management in the Hadoop ecosystem. First, spend the time to master the architecture for the logs. It will reduce both frustration and time if you know where to look for the error messages. It also greatly improves your understanding of how error messages relate to each other. Remember, in problem management, you're looking for the root cause. An error message may be secondary or even tertiary to the actual root cause. You must develop the ability to understand the error messages in context and determine if it is a result of a causal cause or the actual root cause. I put a lot of emphasis on achieving stability and the work practices required to make this happen. I do this as I'm highly motivated to work in an environment where life is orderly and not crisis driven. I'm sure you want to achieve the same for your Hadoop cluster and that you will also embrace the practices of good incident and good problem management for your Hadoop environment.